<laughs> I um, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we've uh, we we started uh, recording. Uh, I did say I tried to log on uh, at about uh, four o'clock. I did make a mistake. I started the wrong account. So I was on uh, and then I didn't realize until uh, I guess uh, uh, 10, 12 minutes too. And uh, uh, just uh, uh, Stephen White Lance was, was logged in. Uh, <laughs> it, at least it looks like uh, the bed in his house is locked in. <laughs> Uh, uh, somebody new uh, coming. Uh, okay, uh, Jermaine. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, let's uh, maybe go to. Uh, PowerPoint, uh, this way, way I like to work on stuff. Uh, share uh, PowerPoint. And to minimize that. And All right, uh, where are we? Um, it's uh, a Social Science uh, 313 Hisapa, uh, what's fall 2020. I guess it's still summer on the calendar. Um, straightforward statistics. Uh, the author of the book is Shei Shen Bowen. Chapter four is uh, is we'll do standard Zeke scores. This is actually um, kind of a, a, a straightforward chapter and, and pretty useful stuff to to um, to break it out uh, this way. Um, in some courses, they kind of hide this uh, this technique of uh, and, and not make it a big big emphasis. Um, the this is this is one way where it's sort of the upper level stats classes uh, go over this a a little bit more slowly. Uh, change in schedule for the exam. Well, I haven't I haven't kept up with the grading very well. I'm I'm thinking this week will run a little better. Uh, just uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, we can uh, um, uh, go forward. So uh, next week we'll do chapter five. Um, it's kind of a difficult subject, but we'll keep the exam uh, topics the same. And today's September 14th. Well, uh, I'll do sort of the attendance. And I, I think uh, I haven't redone the schedule, the um, uh, system very much. Uh, huh. Uh, let's uh, it kind of escape this. And um, um, this way, uh, and I can stop the share. And I can uh, look at my participants list, and I can go through uh, sort of the attendance uh, in the order well I got them in first name order um, 
uh, but I also have the um, So I, I've got the PowerPoint and I can uh, put it on the side here and then uh, go through just marking it. Um, uh, draw, draw uh, just with a pen. And uh, let's see, uh, going through the list, uh, do I see um, Joseph uh, Black Crow? Uh, no, I I don't see Joseph. Um, and uh, uh, Camilla, uh, Kimmy Mila uh, Briggs, um, don't see her. Um, Um, and uh, back, uh, Felicia Fulbert. Yeah, uh, I'm here. Uh, she's here. Yeah, uh, mark you there. Oh, um, let's see. I I've, I've got multiple of these. Okay, uh, got Felicia and uh, Ryan Charging Cloud, I see. I'm there. And uh, 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 Jermaine Garnier, I see here. And uh, Terry Haskell, I, do I, is she here? There she is. Okay, <laughs> waving. Um, well, thanks. Thanks for the wave. That's that's helpful. Uh, Terry Haskell, uh, um, Eleanor Hornback, Ellie Ellie Hornback. Okay. Uh, whoa! Uh, Click the wrong thing. Um, Ellie Hornback. Uh, and uh, Janice, is she there? Don't see Janice. Um, um, and a uh, little bit out of order, uh, 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 Tawny Rizzi. OK, there you are. See the wave. Uh, smile, uh, even a toothy smile. <laughs> Um, might want. Um, hopefully, hopefully the rest of you see uh, see what I'm talking about. Um, um, <laughs> kind of big earrings to wear for a, to a class, but they do look pretty. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't off. Uh, let's see. No, see the big earrings. I. Um, Brad uh, Keckler, yeah, yeah, he's here. Yeah, there he is. Uh, and uh, we can go down. Uh, let's see, our two kings. Uh, Tiff King is here, and uh, Tamara King is here. So we have two kings. Yep. Here. <laughs> And I uh, see Megan, uh, 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 she's there, she's, uh, uh, she's, mas she's masking electronically, huh? <laughs> All they have the camera set to uh, uh, show her eyes. Uh, um, uh, Joni Merced. Uh, no, uh, uh, Christine Payne, um, 
there you are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, there you are. Uh, Christine Payne. Uh, we saw uh, Tawny, uh, well, Terry Haskell, uh, and Tawny Rizzi. Uh, I, I had her already. I, I, I just think, where am I? Uh, uh, just make a note uh, uh, on list, on list previous. I could type this too. Uh, Jack, and uh, both Victorias are here. Uh, yep. And uh, and uh, Brittany. Uh, no, no, Brittany. Uh, And Samantha, I, I saw your name right away. And then down, um, Sherry Turning Heart. Okay. I don't see uh, Sherry. Um, and Stephen, I've uh, seen him. Uh, Shah, um, I think I saw Shah. I'm here. Okay, there you are. And Justice, I saw, and uh, Joni. Here. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. We'll mark you there, Johnny. Okay. If uh, somebody somebody comes in late, um, um, if somebody else notices somebody else coming in late, uh, oh, we might uh, uh, get them there. So. Uh, um, what should I do? Should I? Frank, um, I'm here. Um, Joelle Janice. Joelle Janice. Okay. All right. So it's pronounced your last name, Janice. Um, yeah. Is this someone else might pronounce it Janice? I suppose. You probably heard it pronounced that way. <laughs> yes, uh, I have. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay. Uh, well, we can save that so I can do the attention. I'm here as well. Okay. Uh, who was just speaking? Joseph Blackrow. Okay, Joseph. Okay, we can we can mark you. Whoa. All right, so uh, uh, missing uh, uh, Kimmy Mila um, and uh, that's it. It's pronounced Kimmy Mila. It's what? pronounced Kimmy Mila? Yeah, Kimmy Mila. Is she here or just somebody no, who knows her? I was her? telling you how to say her name. Okay, Kimmy <laughs> Mila. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit unusual. I, I I don't know if I've heard that, or I don't recall hearing it. You know, I just, there there's there's some things I remember from like 50 years ago. But you know, somebody asked me, "Have you have you ever had something? It's like you know, a dish or something." And it's like, I I don't remember. But uh, you know, have have I remembered every uh, you know every meal I've eaten? And no, no. <laughs> um, 
Okay. So uh, we can. Uh, oh, um, maybe go to full screen and. Uh, slideshow and uh, from current oh escape uh, and. back to zoom uh, there there we are <laughs> uh, some of you are probably seeing me but you can have the multi-picture view and see some of your your classmates and um and and that that might be a little more interesting uh, <laughs> uh, can see um uh, tony's uh big earrings <laughs> Uh, all right. I, uh, <laughs> there, there, there's one person who's who's been in the national news kind of recently who tends to wear big earrings. Uh, that's that's our governor, right? Uh, remember seeing her uh, the big earrings. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to agree with her policies. And just realize that she tends to wear wear big ear earrings. Uh, Let's um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Joni, uh, she she back. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So she she's she's coming back. Uh, Um, so, uh, go back to the Zoom and, uh, Zoom meeting, I can share the PowerPoint and, uh, Yes, we can go from current slide. Um, uh, demo uh, some features of uh, virtual campus, uh, Genzibar. Um, yeah, uh, maybe maybe I should uh, go do that. So uh, I'll escape this and. Uh, stop my share and go to uh, share screen um, and share screen and uh, share that and um, I guess I can oh a chat Uh, I think it I think it sounds African. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. I guess I was commenting about a uh, unusual name, um, and uh, uh, Stephen sent a chat uh, message. Um, <sighs> And I'm sharing the screen now, so I minimize this. And I've got the Zoom post. And uh, this is actually, uh, I, I think we can all, we've all talked through how to how to get to. Oh, this is. Uh, this is the instructor's view, and we don't really want that uh switch to uh student view uh, and uh there was a chat message i didn't get to uh and uh, lightening the mood uh, <laughs> you made fun of it too to me okay all right uh that's 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 fine i 
I, I hope I can uh, lighten up this. Uh, uh, some people think of uh, statistics as this uh, tremendously serious uh, subject. Uh, uh, do I? No. Um, and uh, that's um, not necessarily the way I, I do it. So we've got the student view, and I, I think we know how to get there, and there's all this uh, preliminary stuff uh, that uh, goes ahead, and we have previous week's stuff. And if you, uh, last week we talked about descriptive statistics, and I, I did actually get the uh, uh, link up for the recording. And uh, now we're looking at what's there for the standard Z scores. Um, uh, this week, um, there isn't um, an Excel assignment, but there is this. Um, do ask you to do uh, the questions on two pages in the book uh, and um, upload it um, uh, some way. Uh, you can do screenshots or, or scan them or photograph them and put them together. Uh, if you can find a way to uh, combine your files, that's that's uh, uh, more convenient for me. Um, uh, what we're doing mostly with the z-scores are things that could be done in in hand calculations, uh, and um, so uh, if you write them out on paper, uh, take a picture with your phone. Uh, and move them to your computer by some manner, and then assemble them in something like a Word document uh, by just adding the pictures page by page. That would be a very convenient to me. If you can't quite manage that, you know, uh, if it ends up being just a couple of pages and you put up, uh, you know, two or three pages and you put up two or three files, I I could work with that. Um, uh you you might be set up so uh you've got a fancier laptop which you can uh, draw on the screen and do your your work entirely on the screen or if you feel comfortable uh, typing math uh yeah uh not always the easiest thing to do uh uh this time uh so um you have the free response, but no Excel assignment. Uh, I guess I can go back to the rest of these. Uh, and then some instructions there and a, a quiz on properties and and the, the Zoom link. Uh, huh, it's supposed to say week four. I thought I changed it, uh, but uh, there. Uh, had had somebody uh, drop out. Um, that's a a drop line kind of thing. So um, maybe we can go go back to Excel uh, and from current slide and attendance assignments overview. Sort of got to that. Uh, we did show how to. Uh, the PowerPoint slides are are up already, um, and I guess this little comment: people have have done classes over the radio, um, even, and um, so uh, um, often when you do classes over the radio, though you you have like a, a workbook kind of consideration, um, and you tell people uh, to work through a workbook. Um, uh, but but that's okay. Uh, so standard Z scores, Chen Bowen, uh, what we know. 
Well, we know measures of central tendency and we know measures of variability. We can put them together to make something uh, very nice and very useful, uh, a z-score, uh, a standardized value. Um, what's new, uh, we'll create z-scores and then we'll just talk about what's nice about z-scores and how to play around with them. And they end up um, providing some some real useful insights. And and this is a, a point in the class where, uh, yeah, I see it can do some stuff with statistics. Um, uh, so uh, there we have it. Uh, standardized scores, so z-scores. So um, let's just get an idea what we're talking about. They're standardized. Uh, that describe the differences of individual values from the mean in units of standard deviation. <laughs> I, I just what I see see standard. I um, I, I I remember um, uh, there was um, I I used to look at the. Uh, the movie listings in the in the newspaper um, uh, when I when I was young, um, even before I would go to movies very often, I I I just look through the whole newspaper and then see uh, look at the movie listings and I, I I had an idea how I worked they worked in uh, uh, <laughs> uh, even when I. Uh, um uh be, before i i actually uh, you know uh, went around town to look at movies uh uh before i would i would drive around uh in uh i i, I lived in a in cleveland a fairly big uh, metro area so um and this was actually a time before there were many of the real big movie theaters with, you know, eight, 12 screens in the big cities. Um, uh, so if you wanted to see a movie, you had to go and there wasn't an internet. So, so you looked in the newspaper and, um, and there was always a standard theater and it would always show, uh, it would always show movies that, that weren't in any of the other theaters around town. And uh, and I I also remember they they were always and they were always like described as triple X rated and stuff. So uh, a standard was uh, was something I I remember uh, for a long time. And uh, I, I I never went to the standard theater. However, I don't know if it still exists. Um, and uh, although. <laughs> Uh, it, it wasn't too far from, it actually wasn't too far from Cleveland State where uh, Chechen Bowen works and I, I went to school. So um, uh, as long as the mean and standard deviation are known, we can convert things into uh, z-scores. So, or even if we can calculate a mean and standard deviation, we can we can get uh, an approximate z-score. So, So really kind of a nice thing um, and they can uh, just report them as the number of standard deviations above or below, and you don't have to have a measurement unit, so that's nice. Um, so you can you can then jump between different measurement units to make make comparisons. So it it becomes nice. Uh, um uh let's just talk about um you um uh, if you were comparing people in in two different uh uh track and field events uh and try to describe how well uh they did uh and and they're just different events you know you could have a one mile and compare it to a hundred yard dash, 
well, how, how much better is someone? Well, you could calculate Z scores on both of those and then, then compare who, who's the most uh, extreme or who's uh, the most uh, above or below are how many standard deviations above and below the mean uh, each of them are and, and make that comparison. Um, so uh, we, we do just uh, talk about a couple of things. Um, we talk about uh, unusual events or those out outside of uh, uh, roughly 5% and uh, less than 1% in the values are considered extreme or outliers. And um, those are some terms we want to throw around and we want to make these uh, formal in a way and z-scores let us do it. So we don't always get extreme values. Um, and um, for some statistics, for some statistics, extreme values mess them up big time. Okay, I'm, I mean, you get an extreme value and it, it, it makes your statistic very much misrepresentative. Um, so it's important to identify those and treat them with caution. Um, treating them with caution can mean different things in different different contexts. Uh, in a, a laboratory system, you just it's common just to uh, study the thing and throw it out of the data. Um, you you might actually you know uh, uh, physically it's something if if you're testing some property of a, a part in a factory and uh, you realize it, it behaved very different than the others and then you look at it and it's, uh, it's cracked or something. Um, you, you, you might just, just uh, throw it out at the data. Uh, other times uh, you, you might truly want to investigate what happened there. Sometimes when you have like um, uh, data uh, data entry concerns, uh, or someone actually has to make an observation and then key it in and from original paper, um, you might want to go back and check the original paper to see uh, see if it's uh, something was was in here or there. Uh, So we just say, if we have a z-score with absolute value greater than two, we call it unusual. Um, if it's greater than three, we call it an outlier. So uh, these are actually, um, I might wanna make the point. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, Okay, this is, these are definitions. Okay. Uh, and, and so is this. So the purposes of this uh, book, and I guess we just call it a definition. And this is another one. Okay. So these statements here are definitions of ordinary. Outlier and unusual. Okay. Um, and there'll be questions. Uh, is this an ordinary value? Is this an outlier? Is this an unusual value? 
So all we have to do is calculate the Z or um, the um, 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 uh, you calculate the Z value and see if it, it comes into this range. And it meets all these categories. So you realize that this is a, a fully exclusive um, set. Um, so uh, ordinary values, of course, are the most common. Somewhat more rare is unusual. And then simply an outlier. So there's our um, uh, a freaky. Uh, what was the name of that movie? Uh, the um, a, a movie about um, uh, Elton John, the the uh, the musician, uh, Rocket Man, they called it, and and it's uh, um, it was on Amazon Prime, um, which. <laughs> Um, and, and he did something, you know, really unusual. Uh, his uh, grandmother thought he was a very talented musician. So he, he wanted, she took him to apply to this, uh, uh special music school. And, uh, the, uh, the woman who was, uh, in charge of reviewing him says, uh, will you play something? And, uh, she had just started playing something uh, that was fairly uh, fairly difficult uh, uh, piece uh, right as he was walking in, and then she stopped, and uh, she, and he he sat down and he played back the exact same piece in exactly the same way, and the woman who was there said why did you stop there and he said because that's where you stopped so he didn't know the stuff he was doing the whole thing by ear and she she smiled and said i i think we could do something with this 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 fellow uh, so um he wasn't just talented as a composer but uh, a performer too all right uh uh, uh, Z scores, uh, they're designed, uh, assumed to follow a normal distribution. And this is what they look like. And we have this picture. And um, you'll see pictures like this quite a bit. Many, many books have pictures like this. Um, and uh, so the ordinary values towards the center, most likely unusual high and low between two and three and outliers above three. Um, a positive or a negative describes the relation to the mean. All positive z-scores are above the mean. All negative z-scores are below the mean. So we see that here. So we look at that picture, the positives are above the mean and uh, kind of cute about this. The mean, it's got one mode, it's symmetric. So the mean, median and the mode are all the same value. The uh, magnitude of the z-score describes the distance between the mean, the value and the mean and numbers of standard deviation units. And uh, also we could say uh, mode and median here. Transforming raw score, uh, transforming all raw scores to Z scores does not change the shape of the distribution, okay? So if we have data of no matter what distribution, we can go and make a Z score out of it. Um, and it, it doesn't change uh, the shape of the distribution. So z-scores will have a mean zero, 
a standard deviation one and a variance of one. So standardized Z scores have all these super, super nice properties. And if you remember some of the pictures uh, of the normal distribution, I don't know if we've seen those yet, actually. Uh, right here around one, um, um, yeah, uh, there. So the formula, uh, z-score formula uh, is z is equal x minus mu over sigma, right? So we take our raw score, we subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation if we have it. So um, this, just might want to think about this. The problem it solves is uh, this. Uh, this is how you or how to calculate Z scores given X. Um, or the raw score. We ha had a new arrival. If that was somebody who uh, came in after they dropped out and wasn't marked on the attendance, I, I can stop and uh, get your attendance marked. So oh, either no, it was me, my my phone died, so I had to charge it. It's Victoria Pina. So, but I okay, all right. You had had your phone. Uh, phone needed to be charged. Okay, that that happens. Uh, and uh, given the raw score, I don't know what you're seeing. Uh, um, we can do a little algebra. Uh, Racer. A little algebra, not too much. gives x equals mu plus z sigma. Okay. Sometimes I put a line through z to distinguish it from a two. which is how to calculate x, the raw score, given Uh, a z-score. Now, uh, many books
just want to make a note here. It's provided in many books. Okay. Uh, our book doesn't sort of doesn't set this out as a separate formula that you um, uh, use. However, um, uh, like uh, in my 10 to 11 class today, uh, we just simply threw this out and in, 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 in used it. Um, what happens is sometimes you have to calculate a raw score given Z scores uh, uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, you can use this formula and, and do the algebra. You can use uh, this original formula and uh, do the algebra uh, and do the algebra to solve that problem, to calculate x given the z score and do that every time which forces you to remember your algebra and remember just one formula. However, you can think about this. So that's the way our book does it. Other books immediately give you, like right at this point, this formula and say, use this for this other problem. Uh, you can do it either way. Um, and uh, sometimes I'll do it one way or the other, and sometimes both. But uh, that's uh, a good way uh, to uh, go about uh, applying, um, uh, solving a problem is realizing you can have this other formula here. And uh, uh, if, if you go on and study, um, the uh, certain disciplines, you'll probably end up uh, memorizing both. Uh, so uh, the numerator is the x values distance from the mean. Uh, the distance is then divided by the standard deviation here. And the result is a standardized measure in units of standard deviation. Okay, uh, three things you must know before calculating a z-score. <laughs> Whoa, the value of the population, the value of the x, the value of the population, the mean, <laughs> and the population standard deviation. So, uh, yeah, you have to know all the numbers in the formula, and. Uh, I, I I don't know. This might be uh, a Chechen Bowen's just emphasis slide. Uh, you have to know these three things, so don't start calculating it without it. Uh, somebody who's maybe taught a long time, this might be one of their pet annoyances. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, she uh, she gave an example of her uh, uh, syllabus to the uh, faculty members as as a reference on how how she does her class as as one of the example syllabus for the class um, that she she taught out of this this book uh, and uh, <laughs> I'll have to. I'll have to say, uh, she came across to that syllabus as as being kind of uh, nasty sometimes. Uh, <laughs> she said she had a cell phone policy to her class. Uh, she says if if the cell phone goes off in class, uh, your cell phone goes off in class, she'll be the one to answer it. So uh, <laughs> I uh, make sure if you take a class from her to put a password on your cell phone. <laughs> And uh, 
it sort of default and vibrate or or you might have uh, the statistics thing so uh all right uh i don't know um uh, for uh for some of you for some of you you uh you may not recall uh what uh what these things are um sats are uh one of the two common exams in the United States. Um, actually, my dog's been making a little noise. I'll, I'll I'll go check on her for a second. Okay, it didn't seem like she's getting into trouble. Um, SATs, there are two uh, common exams uh, for getting into uh, colleges that are accepted. The ACT that uh, was developed in Iowa and is most popular in places, uh, Iowa and further west. Um, and then, uh, which is here, and the SAT, which is more, which started in New Jersey previously, and is more popular uh, in the eastern states. This is uh, SAT, and uh, I I took the SAT uh, just once, um, and uh, so. Um, and I'm, I'm old, uh, school was cheap, uh, cheaper, uh, very much cheaper, uh, back in, the uh, seventies, uh, when I started college, uh, and, uh, so people didn't really, uh, fight getting a scholarship, uh, that much, uh, So they're they're used for admission to schools and for scholarships. And if uh, for some of you your 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 life path has been a little distant for that, you've uh, after high school you you didn't plan on going to college and uh, you you were away for a while. Uh, and uh, OLC is a open enrollment school, so. Uh, don't don't need to take these things, um, but there are uh, three uh, categories in the SAT: uh, critical reading, math, and writing. Um, and uh, which one is she uh, uh, strongest in? Uh, well, they're different things, and they're different scales. And actually, when you get the used to be. Uh, they would give you a percentile rank along with the number of what you were strongest in. Uh, uh, the scores are normally distributed with uh, uh, following uh, values. Uh, so we now have means and standard deviations of SAT scores and, and we can assume them normal. So we can now see, you know, what's what's Sarah's uh, best discipline uh, with those scores. It might be critical reading, but we have to, we'll have to crunch them through. So uh, this is it, the calculation. We'll get a Z score on critical reading the 640 is the X value, the um, 
497 is the mu or the mean value, and the sigma is 115. Do the subtraction, the division, and the 1.24. Uh, now, uh, this is, um, you can set this up in Excel if you want, or do it with a hand calculator. You might want to take some care and run through these on your hand calculator, because each hand calculator has a little bit different rules on orders of operation. So uh, you might make a mistake and in, 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 in get a odd result. Uh, um, I, I guess we had had someone answer. Uh, if you're new and I didn't mark you on attendance, uh, uh, send me a chat message or or speak up, and I can I can make that adjustment. Okay, chat message. Okay, this is Joni. I'm here. Uh, I'll go back and see. I think I had Joni marked. Uh, uh, yeah, got Joni here. Okay, thank you. I was just making sure. Okay. Um, so again, uh, X was the 590, mu is this, and uh, sigma is 120 and uh, 0.64 and uh, uh, 0.107. Um, these are uh, scores. Um, uh, uh, these are scores that uh, they're all positive, uh, which means uh, Sarah's uh, scores are uh, higher than um, uh, the average uh, person taking uh, the SAT. Uh, the average person taking the SAT. Uh, uh, Brittany, I'm here also. Okay, we can uh, verify uh, if you're here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got you marked. And let's just say, do I have everybody marked? Uh, got everybody marked except uh, uh, <laughs> let's see if I remember this. Uh, Camimila, uh, okay. All right, uh, so um, we're all, all of us are here. I might be flipping through a little fast uh, for uh, some of you, but this is just to go between uh, slides. And uh, um, so her strongest relative to other students taking the SAT uh, at this time is her critical reading abilities, um, which um, is is helpful to know. So Sarah uh, likely may do well in school. And uh, of course, these um, uh, SAT scores include all 
all kinds of uh, uh, people in all kinds of situations. Uh, I remember uh, one friend of mine uh, uh, went and, and took his, uh, I think it was a, was a ACT or an SAT. Uh, uh, one day uh, when he had the flu and he was out uh, drinking the night before and uh, uh, he, he, he literally, as soon as they told him to uh, open his book to mark the scores, uh, marked as many as he, he could and then slept the rest. And, uh, um, well, uh, <laughs> he, uh, the schools weren't real excited about those scores. Uh, um, According to the current data from the National Health Statistics, uh, the height of adult women in the United States is normally distributed with mean uh, 63.8 and standard deviation equal 4.2 uh, inches. Well, um, I, another textbook I I used uh looked at college women and um uh, well the uh, college women generally tend to be a little younger uh you know um uh, tend to be uh, uh younger adult women uh, so and it was um uh a little taller than that i think it was 65 inches uh, but the standard deviation was was a little lower. So, what is the z scale of? Uh, yeah, this is this is marked wrong. Uh, not five point three. Well, we could go with. Where am I? All right. Um, uh, height of five foot, and we want to make this uh, three inches. So again, uh, not not an unusual height. Uh, a uh, woman. Um, my my daughter in law is five three, uh, for example. Um, so uh, we need to convert that to inches, and this is the explicit calculation to inches sixty three. So x is sixty three, mu is. Uh, 63.8 and sigma is 4.2. So minus uh, uh, 0.92 is the Z score for um, my daughter in law. <laughs> only have one daughter in law, uh, only have one son. Uh, <laughs> uh, Let's see, um, what would, uh, how tall would a woman have to be to reach Z is equal to two? Well, uh, this is the algebraic solution, but there's the other way too. Uh, there's the other formula solution that we talked about. Uh, maybe we'll go with the blue. Other formula. x equals mu plus z sigma and then 
x then would be equal to 43.8 plus uh, um, z is 2 and sigma is 4.2 and then we can uh, maybe pop up a calculator and uh, do I need to stop my share to pop up a calculator? Uh, yeah, let's stop the share and uh, let's start um, a calc. Let me find a calculator. Uh, calculator. Okay, and I can um, share my screen. Let's just share the screen. Uh, so you're seeing my screen in uh, two uh, times 4.2. Equals uh, eight point four plus um, six three point eight, and that's equal to seventy two point two. So we just simply can write seventy two point to that. Or uh, you can go through and do this algebraic uh, solution. Okay, so algebraic solution. Well, we have this expression. We know we have a two here. We have a, a um, an unknown x and a minus sixty three point eight two. So multiply both sides uh, by the standard deviation of four point two. So and then we get eight point four is equal to x minus sixty three. And then uh, you uh, add sixty three point eight to both sides leaving you with x is equal to 72.2 reaches the z is equal to 2. So um, that's um, the, uh, so uh, 72 inches is 6 feet. So uh, 6 feet uh, and a little more than, a little less than a quarter puts you at z is equal to 2. So I, I remember when I was um, uh, young, if you'd ask uh, women how tall they are, many, many of the taller women would say they were 5'11", <laughs> even though they were taller than me, and I measured myself as 5'11". So um, <laughs> now, now I think uh, uh, women are more honest about, about how, how tall they are. So. Um, no, particularly if they're like basketball players. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we can have uh, z scores and uh, uh, probably should change this. Instead of M, this should be mu. Okay. Uh, summation of X over N, we add them all up, add all the numbers up, get 72, divide by five. And if you were to calculate a standard deviation, and if you have a uh, calculator that lets, lets you do that, um, 
conveniently or put it in Excel uh, as we talked about uh, uh, last week, we can then come up with a standard deviation of about 15.6 from here. This is everything we need to calculate the z-scores for this population is present. So uh, very good. Uh, so we did the calculations and these are family members and um, let's see, uh, likely the two older people in the so uh, not all that unusual a family, uh, married couple with kids, um, and uh, not all that unusual uh, ages. Um, uh, youngest child is 31 years um, younger than the second oldest adult. and. Uh, Second youngest, so would that be uh, 26 years younger and then 22 years younger than the second oldest adult. So likely uh, second oldest adult is, is the, uh, might be the mother uh, and the 57 year old might be the father. Um, I, would, I would guess. Uh, of course, uh, uh, family members, families are of different forms these days. So uh, that that could. So th the numbers seem reasonable for a, for a family at, at least. Um, uh, Uh, from here, everything is needed to calculate the z-scores for this population is present. So we can do calculate all five z-scores. And they set this up in a table. Um, And uh, lo and behold, we can go through and calculate the z-scores in the manner that we've talked about here. And we can start uh, wondering if there's something strange about this. The mean of the z-scores is zero. Hmm. Seems a little odd. The standard deviation of the z-scores is one. Well, that's, those are nice numbers, one and zero. And uh, turns out that's always true. If you did your calculation of your uh, z-scores correctly, uh, there means the mean of the z-scores is zero and the standard deviation is one. Uh, z-scores are customarily calculated to two places after the decimal place. Okay, so that's that's just a, a custom, nothing, uh, nothing written in stone about that. But uh, so this is this is a property that makes for a nice multiple choice questions uh, uh, on exams. So uh, I don't I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll write it. <laughs> Still, some people get it wrong. Uh, uh, where is it? Oh, okay. Uh, nice for multiple choice. questions on exams.
<laughs> in case somebody looks. <laughs> Tell people uh, people are going to get this wrong on an exam. What happens? That doesn't change anything. It makes it wonder what I'm doing. Uh, Z-scores usually work with population with uh, populations when U and sigma are unknown. Uh, if you're working with a sample, we, uh, the formula doesn't have to. We don't have mu and sigma, but we make the logical choice. And uh, the uh, unwind formula is the same. Uh, attributes of z-scores uh, remain the same as samples. Uh, and this is a big. So uh, the z transformation doesn't change the shape of a distribution. And we still have sample mean and standard sample standard deviation of uh, of one, so uh, with the z scores from a sample, so we can do that. Uh, finding mean and standard deviation from corresponding z and raw scores. Uh, don't know uh, how far are we in class. Save, keep. Just want to see how far I am in the slides. Uh, 22 and okay. Uh, from current slide. All right, and I think I'm sharing the screen, so that that works okay. So I I think I'll go uh uh check on my dog again. Uh we'll pause the recording. Recording. All right. Uh back. Uh dog seems okay. Um dog's old, dog sick. Uh a dog's 15 years old. Uh, I remember seeing a <laughs> uh, information sheet from the vet about the breed. It says age rage, uh, 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 10 to 12 years, and she's 15. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, might need to might need to fix that. So um in a, so uh happiness study investigates participants' feelings about their work, family, and sense of achievement. So in a sample of two hundred participants, a happiness score of sixty-six uh corresponds to Z equals uh one point six and a happiness score of uh, 37 corresponds to a Z is equal to 1.3. <sighs> Can we unwind this and find out the mean and standard deviation of the sample? Uh-huh. Well, that's, uh, uh, that then is a algebra problem with uh, uh, two equations and two unknowns. So, uh, we can then uh, set this up uh, as uh, two equations, two unknowns, and oh, we can find the answer. So, um, yeah, in algebra, these uh, we could set these up as linear equations. Um, And uh, because we can set them up as linear equations uh, and we have two of them with two unknowns, we can uh, solve it in most cases. Uh, so uh, 
when we have uh, this formula, and this is the Z formula for, um, for the sample, and we have uh, these uh, observations, we get a 66. Uh, we multiply through by S, and we have this term. We have another equation that we set up z is equal to uh, 37 minus x bar over s. And we have this. Um, we can use uh, elimination principle. Uh, we can uh, subtract uh, a 1 minus 2. Um, and uh, what they did is they uh, didn't label uh, the one and two, so maybe we should do that. Uh, Let's see my drawing. All right. Uh, this is uh, equation one. And this is two. So uh, subtracting the two. Uh, we would actually write uh, write it this way: 1.6s equals 66 minus x bar. Because we're subtracting, we'd multiply all of this times negative numbers. Okay, so uh, this is 1.3s. And this is negative, uh, oh, this is 66, okay. Uh, negative 37 plus x bar. And then we can add those two equations. Adding equations wise, we get. 2.9s, and we then get 29 plus 0. OK, just adding through uh, for completeness. Um, and then uh, we can follow up uh, the next step is shown um, uh, um, so the next step here is then uh, s equals twenty nine divided by two point nine and that's equal to 10. So that's the result we get here. Um, we then uh, uh, can put S back into equation one uh, and do some algebra. Uh, let's see, to kind of leave off a little bit of the algebra here. Uh, do it uh, one uh, uh, ten times one point six is sixteen uh, equals uh, sixty six minus x bar and subtracting then uh, so this then is equal subtracting. 
minus 66 from both sides would give us minus 50 here is equal to negative x bar and then uh, 50 equals x bar is the same result. So uh, the mean is 50, standard deviation is 10. Okay, so that's, that's that problem. It's an algebra problem. Um, does it come up very often? Uh, I, I really don't think so. I, I mean, um, it's just an a exercise to uh, help you remember the, to um, build up your algebra skills and uh, allow you to um, uh, remember the, the Z definition again. Um, I have taught uh, from from two other books, um, uh, intro to stats classes, uh, and um, this kind of problem wasn't there. So um, and I, I, quite honestly, I I don't remember uh, searching for this kind of problem in other. Uh, textbooks when I've I've looked them over. Uh, if you you talk to faculty members, they don't read um, when they choose a textbook. They don't don't read every page. Uh, look at other people's reviews. Um, uh, look over some uh, discussions that. Uh, are important to them, sort of sample the problems. But um, if uh, one topic that isn't of uh, big concern to your teaching uh, is included in the book, you you kind of ignore it. So uh, this is a text version of this picture. Okay. So uh, 6895, uh, 99.7 rule, uh, plus or minus one standard deviation, plus or minus two standard deviations, plus or minus three standard deviations for uh, a normally distributed uh, values. So these are just areas under the normal curve uh, at the integer levels of standard deviation. So plus or minus one standard deviation, 68, plus or minus two standard deviations, 95, plus or minus three standard deviations. And if you're very um, uh, uh, very uh, uh, text oriented in the way you like to study, uh, uh, very uh, symbolic. Uh, this is a helpful page for you to study. Now, uh, if you prefer the graphs uh, and store uh, pictures in your mind more reasonably, this is the same information. Uh, and uh, oh, we also have the plus or minus sigma uh, and muse here, but it's it's the same same thing uh, uh, displayed differently. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, men's height is normally distributed with mean uh, five eight and uh, standard deviation of six. That seems that seems kind of uh, high on that standard deviation. Uh, what percentage of men are taller than six foot eight? Uh, 
and uh, well, uh, we we kind of you know uh, six foot eight is is really kind of an unusual. Um, uh, you know, you taller than six eight. Uh, you. <laughs> uh, that that kind of puts you in you know forward range in the NBA. Uh, uh, so uh, mu is equal to five foot eight, and that's sixty eight inches. Uh, X is equal to uh, six foot eight and eighty inches, and then we come up with two. We want to come up with uh, two here, so taller than that. Well, we do know from our our z values. We do know from our z values. Uh, uh, that well, z greater than uh, z between two and negative two is ninety five percent. So that's five percent outside that region, and but it's greater than that. So it's above uh, uh, above two. Uh, what? Uh, so it's half of that because we have symmetry on both sides. Uh, half of that five percent excluded uh, in that plus or minus two is two and a half. So this is going to work out to two and a half percent. So uh, this is what I said, somewhat taxed up. So two and a half percent, according to these numbers. Two and a half percent or taller than uh, six foot eight. She, uh, in the slides here, she doesn't cite a source on this data. And I think she did it just to to come up with a two. Uh, but I I think six foot eight is more unusual than that two and a half percent. That that uh, like one out of forty. Um, I mean. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty unusual to have somebody that tall. Uh, okay. Uh, end of show. Uh, keep annotations. Yes. Right. Uh, so, uh, maybe we can stop the share. And uh, a little bit short on uh, uh, slides today, uh, probably owe you about uh, 54 minutes of uh, classroom activity at, uh, at this point. Uh, this is actually kind of a, a, a short chapter relative to some of the others. Um, does uh, someone have a, a question they'd like to ask to the whole class now? Um, I, I guess I can uh, go back and uh, overview things a bit. Um, um, uh, sometimes that's good to just, just go through uh, all the slides and uh, give some notice to you. some of you had had, uh, had dropped out and uh, you might want to know uh, whether you uh, intend to uh, 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 re-watch the video. Uh, I haven't been so good about getting those uh, videos uh, up uh, real soon. Uh, for for one thing, it isn't it it isn't automatic. Uh, uh, I I actually have to go and uh, and uh, uh, look up the result. Um, uh, 
Um, and I, I'll have to look over the homework submissions uh, carefully and, and get the grade results back. That's one of the reasons I, I, uh, I delayed the exam to give me a little chance to do that, and maybe to give you guys a, a bit more chance to, to get ready for things. So uh, I'll go back and uh, uh, we'll share the PowerPoint. and uh, go through the, the slides again. Okay, from current slides and uh, just to summarize thing. Well, that was not what I intended. We, um, Uh, we're doing chapter four this week. I did reschedule things to move the exam back a week and we'll do chapter five because I had some startup problems, uh, grading and some of you getting books late and, and so forth. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look into seeing how, how that goes. Um, uh, as far as attendance, the only person who isn't here is Briggs. Uh, Camellia, uh, uh, I I was told how to pronounce it. I, I didn't get it right. Uh, somebody wants to pronounce it again for me. I'd be happy to hear that. Kimi Mila. Kimi Mila. Okay, as if it was two names, Kimi and Mila. Yeah, it means uh, butterfly, Frank. Kimi Mila, it means butterfly in Lakota. Okay, that's butterfly. Kimi Mila. Okay, Stephen White Lance decided to text it. Kimi, it's Kami Mila. No, it's Ki, like K E, even though it's spelled with an I. Okay, it's Kimi Mila. Yes. Okay, so uh, well, uh, Stephen has a, a little disagreement. Uh, he's uh he sort of uh shortens the first syllable a little to kami mila uh kimi mila okay and it means butterfly in lakota all right so uh transliteral i'm fluent okay <laughs> all right <laughs> Uh, so Stephen, Stephen claims to be fluent in Lakota. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll trust that, um, I'll have to take him on that. I don't have the ability to test him on, on his, uh, Lakota skills. So, uh, that's, uh, uh, to clean up my list a little. Uh, we did go through some stuff on virtual campus. I didn't show you how to get into it this time. Didn't do anything on uh, Genzabar. What we do have though is um, with the features on, on virtual campus I showed you this week, we don't have a Excel assignment, uh, but instead I have another. Uh, I think uh, I, I showed you where the assignments were in uh, virtual campus Moodle. And uh, I, I think for most of you, you're familiar with how attendance works at OLC. This, this often, well, at times this is somebody's first course at OLC. Um, and uh, talked a bit on overview. Uh, and the PowerPoint slides. So we did that. My little note, although this doesn't seem to be working, people have gotten uh, uh, teaching done with less resources than we have with uh, Zoom and internet. So uh, 
it was start chapter four, standard Z scores. And, and this is a real helpful concept. And this is uh, a place where uh, now you see you can make comparisons uh, across things. Uh, um, a Z score, for example, would let you uh, compare a long distance runner success level to uh, a sprinter success level, uh, even though the events are radically different. And uh, previously, we finished up with central tendency and variability. We put those together to come up with this idea of a z-score. And z-scores have some important properties. Uh, we need mean standard deviation original values, and we can put things in z-scores. And we can look like we're busy, right? Uh, and then uh, this is universal yardstick. They're unitless. Uh, so you can compare z-scores then uh, across uh, across ideas. Let's go, babe. Come in. Let's go. And uh, <laughs> uh, we we do have some. We do formally define unusual and extreme and so forth here in outlier. So, um, and you might want to just realize these are definitions and they'll ask you, is this an unusual or this is an outlier, is this? Um, and I think I might need to check on my dog again. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll pause the recording first. Okay, I'm back. Uh, go and uh, share screen the slideshow. We'll share that. And well, where were we? Uh, we have definitions of unusual outlier and ordinary, and they're here. And uh, two, three, uh, beyond three, beyond two, and inside two standard deviations, uh, both positive and negative. Um, formal definition, easy to ask questions on uh, in a subtle way and say, is this an, is, uh, is uh, a person A, uh, Kimi Mila, <laughs> is uh, Kimi Mila uh, a score unusually good on the exam? Uh, and then we'll say, well, we'll calculate uh, Z scores and uh, we then can compare this. So if you take an exam in this class and exam in another class, and you and someone else gets an, takes an exam in another class, and you want to compare them, uh, you can calculate uh, z scores in both if uh, you're given a mean and standard deviation of the grades, for example. Okay, uh, we uh, outliers, unusual values, and this is a picture that matches with those definitions. So if you tend to remember pictures, uh, remember this one. Same, uh, just some properties. Uh, uh, Z scores above the mean are positive, below the mean are uh, negative, the magnitude, the z magnitude of the z scores, the dips distance from the mean value and number of standard deviations, and z scores have, as a group, have this property: mean standard deviation uh, of zero, of mean of zero standard deviation of one, and therefore a variance of one. Um, we have this definition of z-score in a formula here. And you can also view that as how to calculate a z-score given raw data. Um, you do a little algebra to get this formula. And it's provided in many books, not this one. Uh, you don't have to have this one, but you have to do more algebra if you don't. Um, so. Uh, just some properties of this formula. 
which could be done by just examining it. Um, and again, some properties of the formula. The formula has three elements, an X, a mean, and a standard deviation. Uh, and how example, well, what's Sarah's best uh, a discipline here? Critical reading, math, writing or scores, and DSAT gives you means and standard deviations of all the people uh, taking those exams. And then we come up and realize uh, critical reading is Sarah's best, uh, best ability on that exam, although she's above average in all. Uh, uh, for women, uh, oh, what's the z-score of a, a woman who's five foot three, uh, like my daughter-in-law? Um, we uh, uh, worked through it and said minus. Uh, 0 0.19, so we can get negative z-scores. Um, we now are posed with this, uh, how tall would a woman have to be to be uh, at that 95th percentile or, or um, to be um, unusually tall, unusually tall? And a little over six feet is what the answer we got. Uh, the book describes setting up as an algebra problem. You can also do it uh, with the other formula I've given. Uh, this seems to be more trouble than it's worth to me. Uh, remembering the other formulas is uh, easier. And if you happen to take courses in the right discipline, all of a sudden this formula shows up places. Uh, even though you were forced to kind of assuming you, you saw it somewhere. We have a family of five and we can calculate uh, mean and standard deviation. Uh, we we get, calculate a mean and standard deviation and then we can compute the uh, uh, Um, Z scores for each member of the family as far as their age uh, goes. And uh, then we can calculate uh, the this, this sum of the Z scores and the standard deviation of the Z scores. And lo and behold, we find out that Z scores have a mean and standard mean of zero and standard deviation of one. So uh, this makes for nice multiple choice questions on exams uh, related to that fact. So multiple choice questions on exams, you might want to remember that. Uh, we can go through uh, z-scores usually refer to populations, but we also have a, a data-driven uh, z-score. And uh, the mean and standard deviation still work out to be zero and one. So uh, the z-score doesn't change the shape of a distribution. It just changes its center and changes its scaling. Uh, we now uh, have this algebra problem that we work through. Uh, we find, uh, can we find out uh, the uh, given two z scores and two raw scores, can we find the mean and standard deviation? Well, uh, this is mostly an algebra exercise. Um, I haven't um, had much, uh, haven't seen this kind of problem in 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 other in other books. So, uh, and here it is, and I, I put in a few more details. Uh, than the solution in the book. So uh, a few more details I written to maybe help you along the way. We have this 68, 95, 97.5 rule, uh, and uh, it also includes uh, usual values, unusual values, outliers are um, sort of in the same boundary areas. 
Um, this picture, the same as it covers the same thing as the uh, results here. Uh, we uh, interpreting a z-score um, now uh, with this uh, table here. Um, what proportion of people, if we happen to get a two for a z-score, or a one, or a three, or a negative one, or zero, or minus three, we can make statements about it from this table. Now, uh, from this graph itself. Now, there are tables uh, and functions that do the same thing. Uh, so uh, we we can use use those. Uh, uh, we now uh, use that table to say it's two and a half percent above uh, sixty-eight. So. This kind of problem is more common. However, uh, we'll see next week that there are tables for uh, for for using that. So uh, we're we're done here, and uh, we can end slides. Okay, so we're not sharing the screen. So I ended the slide. I, I was sharing just that PowerPoint. Um, a slideshow, and I ended the slideshow, so I'm back, and uh, uh, looks like uh, Atani's getting a little fidgety. <laughs> uh, well, uh, smiling at my jokes, at least I get to see a few of those. <laughs> oh, uh, Jermaine smiled a little too. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I know it's, it's more common to leave those uh, laptops a little bit tilted so we could just see your eyes. So I, I, I can't tell if uh, Tamara and uh, Megan are smiling or not. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, you're smiling. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll let you out a little early unless somebody's got a question. Okay, we can, we can. I got a question about sure. the quiz. Okay. On question two, there was two answers that was, um, I think it was population variance. Okay. And then that was the correct answer for the question. I picked the first one, but I counted it wrong. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll look at that. Yeah, that happened to me too. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll look yeah, at that. Too. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll look at that and I'll, I'll I'll see how those those grade up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So we'll stop the recording and end the class.